it's me, Jonah, and a big thanks to Our Inspirations for sponsoring today's show and tell. I just finished the Red Heart Waffle Stitch Crochet Hat. And this hat is great for so many different reasons. Number one is it's a great hat to make for charity reasons, which I'll explain a little bit further on into the video. It's also a very simple hat to make and good for beginners through advanced crocheters. And it uses any four worsted weight yarn, so you have a wide variety to choose from. The pattern uses as a regular Red Heart Super Saver, but I decided to switch it up and I happen to have some Red Heart Super Saver brushed on hand, so I chose to use the brush, but you can choose any four weights you'd like. And the way this yarn is, it's sort of like a classic Super Saver, but you have all this beautiful fuzz and a nice halo all over the yarn which gives you that really nice texture and takes away some of the stitch definition, but it looks nice in this hat. And you'll need two colors, one for your main body down here, one for the majority of the crown, and then another one for the pom-pom, which is optional. And then you'll need your crochet hook. And today I'm gonna to be showing you how to do the waffle stitch, which you can do in the round, like using this hat, or you can also do it flat, working rows back and forth to create any project you'd like. And I'll also explain the different types of waffle stitches to clear up any confusion. Let's get started. So here's the waffle stitch hat, and it's worked by starting down here at the bottom with a multiple of four chains. That's it. No added. And then you'll work up in the two row repeat using your first color. And then you'll work a few more rows using your contrasting or second color. And then you'll begin to decrease following that same waffle pattern so it looks like these columns just start decreasing slowly and then the other thing about this hat is that this is a very specific type of waffle stitch because the waffle stitch even though it falls under the same name has many different modifications based on the pattern yarn and the look you're going for and this waffle stitch has three half double crochets and then a post stitch and then back post double crochets right here to create the lines but other waffle stitches use front post double crochets when working back and forth flat to get you lines. And then also other modifications include how many stitches are in between. Commonly the waffle stitch is regarded as having two stitches in between. But this has three and you can do as many as you'd like. And same goes for how tall your boxes are as well as wide. By adding more of the classic just half double crochet double crochet rows to spread out your boxes so you have more or less per four inches or however you're taking your gauge and this yarn since it has a little bit of a halo it's a little bit more difficult to use in making the waffle stitch but because of how well defined everything is and you only have three stitches in between it'll be a breeze so i have the sample i've started here i'm going to zoom in a little bit and right now i'm working on the second row of the repeat. And I already started with the chain one, front post double crochet, three half double crochets across this section right here, and then another front post double crochet. And then you need a half double crochet across these three stitches. Pull through three, pull up a loop, pull through three, yarn over, pull up a loop, pull through three. And then around this post right here, you need to yarn over, go around the front of the post like so, and work a front post double crochet. And then end it as you normally would, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And repeat that around. So in the next three stitches, you'll work a classic half double crochet, no front loop, no back loop, no post stitches. And then you'll work a front post around this next stitch, front post double crochet. And then three half double crochets, another front post, half double crochet, and half double crochet again. And you need to keep doing this around. And the way the hat works is that it is, there's three sizes. There's the small size, which is for the two to four year old. 
a medium size, which is for a 6 to 10 year old, and then a large size, which is for an adult. And the way you work it is by just adding groups of four to get your largest size. For the small size, it's 56 chains to start off with. And then for the medium, it's 64. And for the large, it's 72. But you can make any size you want customary by just taking off groups of four or eight. Half double crochet, half double crochet again, post stitch, and then three half double crochets. And then we're going to join with a slip stitch to that first front post double crochet. Under both loops, pull up, pull through. And now you can chain one or chain two, whatever you prefer and is your crocheting style. It doesn't matter because it does not count as a stitch. And then this is the fourth row, or as I would say, the second row in the two row repeat, but the fourth row of what you would actually work in the hat if you're starting from bottom to top. You'd work a double crochet front post around the first stitch. And then to create the waffle stitch, like you see here, the boxes, you're going to work a back post double crochet around these three half double crochets. So you yarn over, go behind your work, come to the front and out the back, pull up, pull through two, and pull through two. So yarn over, go to the front, to the back, pull up a loop, and finish how you normally finish your double crochet. And then work a front post into the next stitch. And now you can see we've created a third box here as opposed to one part of one and another one added here. So you'll work three back post double crochet. Three. And then you're going to front post double crochet around this next stitch. Back post around the next stitch. And then repeat this around. And you would need to do this five inches, six inches, or six and a half inches in that corresponding order based on the size you're making. Or if you're making a custom fit, however long you need to make it. And you want to end on a, a fourth round because the pattern states that it's a two row repeat of round three and four. And you want to end on a fourth round. And the round I previously showed you, that would be considered the third, third round in the pattern with the one front post double crochet and then three standard half double crochets. And the fourth round would be this round with one front post, double crochet accompanied by three back post double crochets. Double crochet, double crochet, I have maybe three or four sections left of my groups of four stitches just going around the back and being careful that you don't catch these loops on top just go towards the bottom of the stitch because you can work back post and front post through the actual loops right here on top and that has a slightly different look and affects the fabric in a different way but this is going to be a nice and dense hat And the other thing about this hat is it's a great hat for charity if you are a crocheter that likes to give the charity sometimes as well as keep for yourself or gift to friends and family. It's a very simple hat to make and you can whip them up, whip them up in no time, but they're warm and they can use any different yarn. You can use scraps, leftovers, all materials from acrylic to wool. Even cotton would be nice in the waffle stitch. Front post double crochet. And then three back post. And then I'm going to end this round 
as all rounds by slip stitching into my first front post double crochet. And then I'm gonna grab my yarn skein that I've been using so far and pull off some more yarn. I just like to pull off a little bit at a time to avoid anything getting tangled. And let's say you worked the length you needed and you changed colors part way through and kept going. Then for this round, this is the round where you're gonna start shaping the top or the crown of your hat. So you chain one or two to start and double crochet front post around this first front post double crochet. And then you'll half double crochet into the next stitch. And then you're gonna work a half double crochet two together into the next. So insert, pull up, keep it on your hook. Yarn over, insert into the next stitch. Pull up, keep it on your hook, and you should have five loops on your hook. Then over, pull through all five. And now you have two stitches in between here. And then you'll work your front post, double crochet here. A regular half double crochet into the next stitch. Half double crochet two together into the next. Front post again. Half double crochet into the next. And this is how slowly and gradually you're able to decrease around the top while keeping that authentic waffle look instead of stopping and just doing a classic decrease going from six to five to four and so on or whatever number you would start at in stitches between your decrease. And before, you had 56, 64, 72 stitches for the standard sizes given in the pattern. And now, after the completion of this row, you would have 42, 48, or 54. Half double crochet. Work a half double crochet decrease. Front post double crochet half double crochet into the next stitch, half double crochet two together decrease, front post, half double crochet, and a half double crochet decrease. And then slip stitch to that first front post, and then chain one or two. And this round is just the same round as you did two rounds ago, but you're only going to be working two stitches in the center. So front post your first stitch, and then around this next half double crochet, back post double crochet, and then back post double crochet around this entire two half double crochet together. Then front post around the next stitch, Back post around the next, and the next. And you can see even though on the second half of this square, we decreased down to two half double crochets in between, as opposed to the original three, it still looks like a solid waffle square. And as you work up doing these rounds, it'll, they'll just keep getting smaller and smaller until they're non-existent. And then you can weave together the top of your hat. We're going to keep repeating this group of three stitches all the way around. And at the end of this row, you'll have the same number of stitches as you did for the prior round. So 42, 48, and 54 in that order. I'll back post again. front post, two back post double crochets, front post again, two 
two more back posts, front post, and then two back post double crochets to end this row. And then slip stitch to the top of your first front post double crochet, just like you normally would. And you can see how this is shaping out and it's starting to decrease on the top and shape out. And you'll keep continuing that row in between. But for the third row of the top, you would start by chaining one or two and front post double crocheting around that first stitch. And then where you put the half double crochets, just work one half double crochet two together. So work a half double crochet, but stop after you pull up a loop, yarn over, insert into the next stitch, pull up a loop, pull through five, and then work your front post. Insert, pull up, yarn over, pull up, pull through two, or should I say pull through all five, and then repeat your front post double crochet. Front post double crochet. And at the end of this row, you'll have 28 stitches, 32 stitches, and 36 stitches. Front post, half double crochet two together. Front post, half double crochet two together. Front post half double crochet two together, front post, and half double crochet two together. And the fourth round, like you can probably tell from the pattern we're working, is a chain one or two, front post double crochet, back post double crochet, front post double crochet, Back post double crochet, front post double crochet, back post double crochet. And then after you complete this row, the last decrease row before you begin to not do any more post stitches. It's slightly different because you won't be using actual decreasing stitches this time. You'll just be skipping stitches, which when you're working post stitches around a hat or trying to decrease for whether you're doing amigurumi or the top of the hat or even pillows or anything of that sort, that's a common way besides just taking away stitches by working two together is skipping them all together. Back post around this next stitch. Front post around the next front post double crochet. And then slip stitch to the first stitch. And now you can see how the hat is starting to form. This is a very small and dilated sample of what your hat would look like depending on the size you're making. And this next stitch, there's no post stitches. And at the end of this row, you'll have 14, 16, or 18 stitches. So chain one or two and work a front post around the first front post double crochet. And then stop. You see this back post double crochet right here? Just skip it like it's not even there. Yarn over and sit around the next front post double crochet and work a front post double crochet. Skip over the next one and front post double crochet. So at the end of this row, you should have half of what you had for the last row. So like I said, 14, 16, or 18 stitches. And then all these spots right here, you just skip over and they just fill in automatically. And our final front post.
and then like always slip stitch to the first front post double crochet of this round and then the next row is the half double crochet and each stitch around which is very self-explanatory but then for the final row you will just work half double crochet two together all the way around just steering down and getting rid of all those final few stitches Half the book of shade two together. Half the book of shade two together. And before you work this, just work one extra round of just regular half the book of shade, and that would be round six of the top. And then once you've just decreased your stitches, slip stitch to the top of that first stitch, and then you can sew that last section up. And then add a pom-pom after drawing through your remaining stitches and fastening that very securely. And the pattern has instructions for how to make a pom-pom by hand. Or you can use a pom-pom maker, whatever best suits you. Or you can leave it off, just in general. And then here's the inside of what your hat will look like. It has these columns that you can pull apart and see the different sections where you worked and where you ended that back post round. And when you're adding your pom-pom, just sew it in all these top stitches through the half double crochet round and then the ladder round of just half double crochet two together. And that is how you complete your waffle stitch hat. And by working your two different colors and adding your pom pom, this is what you're going to have as your finished hat a beautiful section of your base color. A few rows of your accent color that will then start to decrease down here coming all the way up and then you sew a pom-pom in there nice and tight and then I also added just a round of single crochet on the bottom you would just put it right through the bottom of these loops and that's completely optional of course and then I added my Jonas hands tag I hope you enjoyed making this waffle stitch hat it's a super easy to a repeat that can be applied to so many different projects in the stitching world. I hope you enjoyed learning how easy the waffle stitch is and how you can use it in the waffle stitch hat from Red Heart, or you can use it in any other project you'd like if you work it flat, or as I showed you in the round. And remember to switch up your colors. Here I have cream and clay, but you can use the cream and the beautiful gray, or just have a lot of fun with it. And you don't just have to use the brush. I hope you enjoyed the show and tell, and please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to Your Inspirations, as well as Jonas Hands for more crochet show and tells. Crochet away, friends!